This is Old Testament Survey, lesson number 39. This is going to deal with the book of Zechariah. Zechariah is a tempor uh, contemporary of Haggai, and he wrote his book during the time of Ezra, after Israel had returned from their 70-year captivity uh, in Babylon. Now the general consensus as to the writing of the book is somewhere around 520 BC. There are 14 chapters, 211 verses, and approximately 6,443 words. Now the main theme of Zechariah is the day of the Lord. Of course, this is the main theme throughout the whole Bible, uh, starting back there in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, which can cover uh, the starting from the rapture of the church when the church goes up the day of the lord begins and that thing runs seven years of tribulation uh, and then it runs a thousand years millennium uh, and in between uh, the uh, uh, tribulation and the uh, millennium of course is the second advent and along with that comes the judgment of nations now generally when you hear the day of the lord one might just consider it is only uh, the day the Lord shows up by way of the second advent and the battle of Armageddon. And yet, uh, as you go through the minor prophets, you'll find that the day of the Lord, also uh, called the time of uh, God's wrath or the day of wrath or just wrath in general, uh, can cover the entire span of the seven-year tribulational period, which is called the time of Jacob's trouble. The first three and a half years, you'll have uh, some sort of... Uh, agreement made the confirmation of a covenant between the antichrist and the nation of israel and then midway through that you'll have the abomination of desolation set up and you'll have the breaking of that covenant the breaking of that agreement and you'll have the great tribulation uh for the next three and a half years that's when the uh the mark of the beast system is, uh, is on earth and um that's how you'll have to buy or sell. And I say you, I'm talking about the unsaved that are left behind. No Christian goes through or endures any part of the tribulation period. Nothing in the first half or the second half. And of course, uh, halfway through the tribulation, you're going to have uh, in Revelation 12 and Revelation 4.1, you're going to have a mid-tribulational rapture uh, for those saints in the first three and a half years. And uh, so anyways, the day of the Lord is the main theme of Zechariah. So you'll get some things that are going to talk about the tribulation. You'll get some things that are talking about the second advent as well as the millennium. And all that is uh, a time period that stretches uh, a thousand seven years called the day of the Lord. Now, Zechariah's name means Jehovah remembers and Zechariah's prophecies concerning the kingdom of heaven and the everlasting covenant that God has made and will make uh, new with the nation of Israel in the millennium. So, of course, the Lord remembers his promises. He remembers his covenants, and he's not going to uh, break them, but he will make a new covenant with the nation of Israel. In fact, it, in some sense of the word, has already uh, begun in, uh, at Pentecost there in, in Acts chapter 2. Uh, you have the uh, initiation, the starting of the new covenant, which Israel then rejects um, by the stoning of Stephen, and that new covenant is turned from a physical, literal new covenant to the nation of Israel pertaining to the kingdom of heaven and is turned into a uh, spiritual new covenant by way of, uh, Paul calls it my gospel, which was kept secret since the world began and yet revealed to Paul uh, in Galatians there. And uh, so the new covenant now comes by way of the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, that's for every individual, Jew or Gentile. But it's going to go back to a national new covenant with the nation of Israel for those that uh, endure to the end and, uh, and are there as a remnant uh, for the Lord to uh, deliver in the day of uh, his wrath, the second advent. All right, now there are two phases or two phrases, I should say, that are used by Zechariah to describe the day of the Lord. He uses in that day that phrase, in that day, 20 times in 20 verses. He also uses the phrase, the Lord of hosts, which is used 52 times in 45 verses in his 14 chapters. Now you can compare that to Isaiah. He uses the phrase, the Lord of hosts, 53 times in 66 chapters. 
And Jeremiah uses that phrase, the Lord of hosts, 69 times in 52 chapters. So you can see Zechariah is uh, pretty much running alongside Isaiah and Jeremiah by way of the number of use pertaining to the number of chapters. All right, now Jesus Christ is found in the book of Zechariah. He is identified as a servant in Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 8. And there you'll see, Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest. There's a type of Christ. Thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. And so the Lord Jesus Christ is described there as being uh, his servant. And a title is given to him there, what is called uh, uh, branch, capital B, capital R, capital A, N, uh, C, H. All right. Now, you'll find the Lord Jesus Christ also called a servant in the book of uh, Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So the Lord Jesus Christ is called uh, a servant. And he's called here in title a branch. Now, this branch and the idea that Jesus Christ is a servant matches the book of Mark, where Jesus Christ is portrayed as a servant. All right, then also in Zechariah chapter 6 and verse 12, we find, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. There's that phrase pertaining to the day of the Lord, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch. And he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall be, build the temple of the Lord. Now you'll see there it says, Behold the man. Find that the Lord Jesus Christ is uh, portrayed as the Son of Man. Not only is he a uh, servant, but he's also the Son of Man. And uh, this will match the book of Luke, where Jesus Christ is identified as the Son of Man. Now these two references of a branch also match the branch found in Jeremiah. A chapter number 23. Again, Zechariah and Jeremiah and Isaiah uh, have some peculiar connections by way of the Lord of hosts and also by the way of the branch being mentioned. Of course, the branch is the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 5, uh, we read, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And of course, that's the millennium. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Now, uh, the Bible says, and all Israel shall be saved in Romans chapter 11. And so the Lord's going to save, and they're going to deliver. he's going to deliver uh, Israel uh, at the second advent there by calling upon the Lord. That's uh, Psalms over and over again in Joel chapter 2. Uh, they're going to call upon the Lord and God's going to save them. And Israel shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. So he's the Lord our righteousness or the branch, the Lord our righteousness. And so what he's doing here is he's building upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course you can do the same thing uh, by the four accounts of what's written on the cross there. And when you combine all four titles, uh, as is found in uh, Mark 15, 26, Matthew uh, 27 and verse 37, Luke 23, 38, and John 19, 19, the full reading will be, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And uh, you have the thing here where the Lord Jesus Christ is called the branch, the Lord, our righteousness. And uh, this uh, Jeremiah 23, 5 and the branch here is going to match Matthew by way of Jesus Christ being uh, the king. Now in Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 2, the branch is mentioned the fourth time. So four gospels and four accounts of what's written uh, over Christ's head on the cross there. And four times the branch is mentioned matching all four gospels. Isaiah chapter 4. And verse number two, in that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped 
of Israel. And so the branch here would uh, represent uh, the book of John, where he refers to the Lord Jesus Christ as being the Son of God. Now the prophet Zechariah has four main messages for the nation of Israel. And that is, he gives them a stern rebuke, then he gives them a stern reminder, then he gives them the hope of restoration, and then he gives them the promise of a return. These messages can be found in chapters 1 and 2. There you'll find the rebuke and the reminder. And you'll also find the rebuke and the reminder again given in chapters 7 and 8. And then the restoration and the return messages are found in chapters 7 and 8. And then also in chapters 13 and 14. Now in the process of all of his uh, preaching and his prophesying, uh, Zechariah has visions. He has the visions of the horses and uh, the myrtle trees in Zechariah chapter 1, verses 7 through 11. He also has visions of the four horns and the four carpenters in Zechariah chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. In Zechariah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, he has a vision of a man, or he, he sees a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then in chapter 3, he has this vision, uh, or he's uh, caught out into the future. He sees something going on. Uh, that is uh, chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 10. And uh, there you have Joshua, uh, the high priest, confronting uh, Satan. All right, and then in Zechariah chapter 4, you have the candlestick with seven lamps. And those seven lamps represent the seven churches of Asia in Revelation chapters uh, 2 and 3. And the candlestick there represents the Lord Jesus Christ himself, according to Revelation uh, chapter 1. Then you have uh, the two olive trees on both sides of the candlestick. And uh, one is representing Moses and one is representing Elijah, which are the two witnesses during the first three and a half years of the tribulation uh, in the book of Revelation chapter 11 before they get their heads cut off, leading to a mid-tribulation rapture. All right, then in Zechariah chapter uh, number five, you have the vision of the two-winged... Um, uh, two-winged creatures or two-winged storks as it were and also uh, the ephah uh, this is what uh, dr ruffin calls the three ufos you got the ephah you have the the talent of lead and uh, you have uh, these winged creatures and uh, pertain to the land of shinar uh, which is babylon and uh, then you have uh, number eight you have the the chariots and those are found in uh, Zechariah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. You'll find uh, horses there, uh, but you'll also find some chariots. Perhaps this uh, has something to do with uh, the horses in, um, in Revelation chapter uh, number 6. So those are the eight visions. The uh, horses, the four horns, and the four craftsmen. Uh, the man or the angel there in the measuring line. Uh, you've got Joshua and Satan. You have the lamps and the olive trees, the flying scroll, and then you have the woman in the ephah uh, pertaining to the land of uh, Babylon in Shinar. And then you have the chariots mentioned there, the four chariots mentioned there in chapter number six. Concerning some of the other prophecies as found in the book of Zechariah, We'll start with Zechariah chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. And there, Zechariah is prophesying against uh, Tyrus and Zidon and Ashkelon and Geza and Ekron and Ashkelon and Ashdod and the Philistines. Chapter 9, verse 6, Zechariah is prophesying about a bastard of Ashdod. Chapter 9, verse 9, he's prophesying about the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ. Chapter 10 verse 1 we'll find uh, some truths concerning the rain and the latter rain. This is also found in the book of Joel chapter number 2. Then you'll find in uh, Zechariah 11 1 uh, the fir, the cedar, and the oak trees. 
chapter 11, verse 7, you'll find a prophecy of Judas selling out Christ for 30 pieces of silver, as is found in the New Testament. Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 7, you'll read about the prophecy of Jesus Christ being forsaken by his disciples at his arrest. So Zechariah is pretty loaded with imagery and similitudes and likenesses and visions and dreams and whatnot to uh, describe future events and prophecies. And then sometimes it's just a straight up prophecy uh, that you can pretty much easily discern like Judas betraying Christ and the disciples uh, fleeing uh, at his arrest. Now in chapter 12 verses 1 through 8, you'll find Zechariah prophesying against Israel, Judah and Jerusalem uh, by way of them being in the tribulation and then also about the second advent. Verses 9 through 14 of chapter 12 will be about God's judgment concerning the nations that came up and warred against Israel. And again, you can see God judging the nations by way of the second advent. And then there's the judgment of nations, the uh, sheep nations and the goat nations at the end of the second advent. Chapters 13 and 14 are guaranteed prophecies against the UN. Uh, there the Lord's going to gather nations together and it's going to be for the sole purpose of wiping them out at the second advent and battle of Armageddon. Now, of course, uh, at the end of the millennial reign of Christ, after Satan is loosed, he's going to go and gather the nations together against God. And then you have the battle of Gog and Magog. The battle of Armageddon happens at the end of the tribulation. The battle of Gog and Magog happens at the end of the millennium. And then lastly, chapter 14 of the book of Zechariah, uh, there we find that the nations will be under the rule and reign of Jesus Christ. And if they want a blessing, they're going to have to come to worship the king, as is found in Zechariah 14, 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, there's that connection to the uh, uh, day of the Lord, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So while the nation of Israel gets the uh, early and the latter rain, the former and the latter rain, those nations that don't come up to worship the king, they get no rain at all. And uh, then there's going to be dire consequences for those who don't come up. Verses um, 17 through 19, the Bible says in verse 18, if the family of uh, Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So obviously there's still going to be nations in the millennium that uh, God's going to be dealing with. And of course he can uh, cast the nations into hell and then, you know, start the nations all over again and then those nations uh, like the end of the millennium will will rise up against their king uh, one more time only to be destroyed a final time so Zechariah that's uh, that's the book of Zechariah it's, it's considered to be uh, a prophetic book a minor prophet book dealing with the day of the Lord the tribulational period the uh, second advent the judgment of nations the millennium and then uh, and then even some things pertaining to the great white throne judgment and uh, even going out into eternity. All right, until next time, may God bless.